this is the character panel in Photoshop. And if you don't see it, okay, you can see this little icon here. If you don't see it here, you can always bring up the character panel by going to the menu and going to window character. Either way. So there's um, just right, right here, there's character and character styles. Again, we're on character. All right. Um, so I've given you a bunch of different text layers here. And we're going to work through a little bit about the character panel. So the character panel is very similar to the ribbon in Microsoft Word where you can change your font, size, color, alignment, things like that. So I've given you um, different layers here to work with, and I kind of color coded them to sort of match the font color here. That, that's not important. Um, but I'm going to start with layer one. So I want you to double click the layer thumbnail. And what that does is it selects the text block for you. And when you select the text block, you can now format the text block. You can't just, now let me show you this. So you can't just go in here and start changing things just because you're on the layer. You have to select what you want to manipulate, okay? All right, so we have our options here. Now, if I go into the first option, you can change your font, okay? Now, you can roll through and see, you know, whatever different varieties you want. I'm gonna stay on Myriad Pro here. Um, and some fonts have, let's move over to the next one. Some fonts have um, some extra formatting. So there's like an italic version or a bold version. Now some of them, some of these weird fonts, okay, um, may not, see this one doesn't have options. So you have to, you know, I'm just kind of explaining what's going on here. So I'm gonna actually cancel out of that because I don't want to change the font. Let me go back and reselect my text. Um, so if you want to change your text, go in there and pick something. I really don't care what it is. And if you want, you can see if it has an option to change, it doesn't, okay? So let's just talk about basics for layer one. Layer one, let's just, we change the font and if we want to change the color, we can click on the color box here and we can go in here and we can pick whatever color, okay? Now, if you look on your options bar, you can also change your font here and you can change your color here. Not all of these options are available on the options bar, but if you're doing basic things, you certainly can make some changes up here. So let's just do a font size change, right? We can change the font size just like you would in Microsoft Word. Let's jump to the um, font size on the actual character panel. So again, I have the same options here, but what if I don't like these? Or what if I don't know exactly what a 48 point font will look like? You can put your cursor as long as the text is selected and you can put your cursor right on the icon. And each icon has a tooltip, tells you what it does, set the font size. If I slide to the right, I can slide and not worry about, well, what does you know a 100 point font look like? Just do it until it looks you know, the size that you want. And similarly, you can drag to the left and you can reduce the size. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and commit the change here just so we can move on to another layer. All right, let's go to layer two. Select layer two and let's go through some of the other options. So we've gone through um, choosing your font, whether it has a bold or italic version and color. And we've done the um, text size. Let's jump now to this one, which is called kerning. And kerning, it says, it tells you what it does. Sets the kerning, but you don't know what kerning means probably, between two characters. Okay. So if I have my entire text block selected, it will not do what I needed to do. So here, what we have to do, we double clicked, right, to select the entire layer text, but we want to click our mouse between two characters. Okay, so I'm just going to put it between the N and the O. Do not select a letter. What I mean is we don't want it to do this. We need a blinking cursor in order for this to work. Let me try that again. All right, so just have a blinking cursor somewhere between two letters in that layer. And you can go to the drop down here. These are not going to be that visible, but we can go in a positive or negative direction. My recommendation is do what we did with the font size. Just put your cursor right on the kerning icon, slide it to the right. And you will see as you slide to the right, you're increasing the kerning or the space between those two characters only, okay? If I go in a left direction, it reduces. And if I start to go negative, I get an overlap. That's what kerning does, okay? Um, so, and I can kern 
within the same text block. Okay, so if I put my cursor here and increase, I'm going to only increase the space between those two. All right, when you make a change in, um, in Photoshop, you need to commit, right? So either hit the check mark or hit enter to lock in the change. Whoops, didn't do that. I hit enter and it did a line break because my cursor was blinking. Um, I'm going to hit backspace then back up here. Uh, let's just lock it in. Instead of hitting enter, let's commit the change. All right, so that one shows kerning. Let's go on to the next text block, layer three. I'm going to double click the layer thumbnail, and this time we're going to jump to the right and we're going to set what's called tracking. Now, tracking says set the tracking for selected characters. I have the entire text block selected, and I'm going to increase the tracking. Watch what happens. It increases the space between all of the characters. If I go to the left and go in a negative, direction, it squeezes the amount of space or reduces the amount of space. Okay, that's called tracking. You have to be careful that you don't end up not being able to read what you type. So an easy way to remember tracking, I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark to lock that in. Tracking is like each letter. If you think about a track where you do races, you know, around the football field, you have lanes for each runner. You can think of it as a letter in each lane. You can either reduce the amount of space or increase the amount of space between the different runners. That's an easy way to remember tracking. All right, let's move on to layer four. Double click layer four. You can see we've got this text block and we're gonna jump to these two here, which are vertical scale, pretty self-explanatory, vertical scale. Some people say, well, why don't I just change the font? Vertical scale only changes the height of the letter. So when I scale up, the letters get taller. When I go down, so depending on what you want, this is not achievable with a font size, okay? So pick a value. I don't care what you choose. And let's also, if you want to change the horizontal in the same text block, that's fine. We can increase the horizontal scale, okay? Or we can reduce it depending on what we're trying to achieve. Those are pretty easy to understand. All right, let's lock that in. Check mark. All righty, layer five is this text block. And this is one layer, and I have basically hit enter within the text block. And the only way you can tr to um, work with this layer, um, we're going to go over what's called letting. And letting here is this icon. And letting is like line spacing, OK? So right now it's set to 44 point or whatever value yours says probably matches what you see here. And we're going to slide it to the right. We slide to the right. We're increasing the vertical space, kind of like line spacing. When I drag to the left, I reduce the amount of space between um, the lines. That's the letting option. Okay. All right. And... We did kerning and tracking. All right, we're going to do one more in this video, which is called baseline shift. And this is the icon for baseline shift. Now, I'm going to jump back to layer one for this. And I am going to double click. And I'm not going to select the entire text block because you're not going to understand what's going on. All right, so I'm going to actually just select the word Nona. And I'm going to turn on my rulers with Control R. You can if you want. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to actually pull um, what's called a guide. I'm just going to pull from my vertical ruler just so you can see what I mean by a baseline. So the baseline is like notebook paper with lines on it. And I can choose to move the text that's currently selected above or below the baseline. Okay, and that's this icon here. So watch what happens when I shift the baseline up. Okay, if I go to the left, it goes down. So, and it's dependent upon what you have selected. So, if I lock it in, that's what I get, okay? Now, if I select one letter at a time, I baseline shift this one higher, I can do that. I can select this one. I can do one at a time. I can do several letters at a time. It just depends on, again, what you have selected. So, if I want these two things to go down the baseline, below, you know, and you can stack these things. What I mean by stacking is, you know, you can change all kinds of things. I can increase the horizontal scale of just those two letters, even though they're below the baseline, okay? If I want to change tracking, I'm sorry, uh, kerning between two letters, put my cursor between, 
here and here, and for whatever bizarre reason you want to increase the amount of space between those two, which is kerning, you can do that. Okay, so that's not every icon on the character panel. We're going to talk about the rest of the ones we didn't work with in another video.